Hello everybody, hopefully you're having a wonderful, fantabulous, and mystical day. My name's Emmanuel Aguilar, aka Mystic Fox 4, and um, uh, we're gonna, gonna be browsing ArtStation once again. Uh, in case you don't know, um, I started a YouTube series called All Art No Breaks, where we go into ArtStation, do a deep dive, and uh, get some finds, and find some artists that we can actually learn from. So, on this episode, we're going to be featuring a couple of artists, and without further ado, let's get started. So, this is one of the artists that I found. His name is Joshua Brian Smith. Um, it's Loken, I think is his online name. Uh, he is uh, AAD at Riot Games on the Valorant Project. So, here's what we're going to be focusing on this episode, which is um, composition and lighting, right? And how it affects the piece and how it makes you feel. So, one of the things that I've actually been studying more than draftsmanship, like um, last episode, or even shapes, is how a piece makes you feel. Because if it makes you feel something, then it's successfully done its job. Now, there's a lot of controversy around this, so you can take it or leave it. But I find it really important to have a piece make you feel something because it makes other people understand what it is you're trying to convey on top of um you know the the technicality of like how you did it right because from afar it doesn't matter how good your lines are because you're not that close right we're not zooming in on this picture right here just to look at these little details that he put in here no right so you're you're looking at the overall piece right so when i talk about lighting what am i talking about so this right here is the main focus but this is the the secondary and then this is uh one of the primaries right so we have the light that's like somewhere over here coming down here it's hitting this and then this is giving him a little bit of rim light here and the the light in the back that's like a uh third light source is really really nice and the, this little glow that's going on behind is just really popping right all of these elements working together is giving away this giving off this ominous kind of a feeling and i really dig that i like the the feeling that this is giving off like frightful or, or ready re ready to fight right and these are just little things that the artist did but you can see even here right so like zoomed in like these little these little lines right here i think could be averted right but then some of this stuff is a little bit messier but like the point of the piece right the, when it makes you feel it's all here right like it, it the, the message message is conveyed regardless of the technicality right the draftsmanship does not matter out the window right so um that's something that i've been focusing on so i want i found a couple of other artists that have done something similar with the the, the feeling and, and evoking that kind of emotion in the piece and uh, i wanted to share those with you um, I'm gonna go ahead and dive in onto this guy's art station because he does a really good uh, job doing this um, and then uh, I'll show you the other two uh, you can see in this one right this he he likes doing that spotlighting and I think that it really works for his character here um, I believe he's like an adventurer type character and he goes around doing things but th this feeling is like really um, th this one isn't ominous but it's more like He's on his way somewhere and somebody hit him with a spotlight and it's shining off of all of his little gadgets and stuff, which I think is really cool. Um, like it sets, it sets the mood in that one. Um, and this one too, right? This is like an epic moment, something's about to happen, right? He just walked in, so the floor started cracking, boom, right? And the main lights here, it's bouncing off, it's giving off this shadow, which I actually imagine is going to cast a bigger shadow. because. That red glowing looks like it's demonic in some way, shape, or form. But you get the idea, right? And and here he's kind of delving into the color palettes so that you know he can further render it in, in the later phase. It says color sketch here, so exactly what, what I'm trying to I'm trying to convey. And and here you can see a lot of the colors, right? Are like working together in a harmony that's like allowing the reader to feel both um, I guess hopeful is the word but also like something's about to go down, right? Like this red, the saturation of it is unlike ver like almost anything else in the piece. Like nothing else is that saturated other than the little light source, which is there simply to light him. But this, if you just had this circle here, right? And then you had no light source, this would be like really pop popping even more, right? Um, but he's in the dark too. So you have to give him a little bit of light source. Uh, so I, I really like how he uses lighting. So. Without further ado, let us move over to the next artist. You can you can see this guy. I really like this guy's work. It's really good. 
All right, so we're gonna go to Liam Tai Wu. So um, this artist is really uh, good at rendering, as you can see here, and they're really good at drawing. But what I wanted to focus on again is the lighting. So I like how it's the character's face is like pointed downwards, and like you don't have a lot of lighting on the actual face, other than like the magic and scriptures and stuff, that, or the enchantment that she's casting, or whatever it is. But you don't see a lot of lighting here, so it's supposed to give that kind of ominous feel to it. Now this isn't a finished illustration with like a background and stuff, but we do have a little bit of this stuff here in the background, uh, like on the lower half of the piece, and I do think it serves a purpose of like giving you like a, a grounding to the piece. This is something that I actually haven't tried doing too much in my pieces, which is like give the character something to stand on, um, and it's something that I keep seeing in a lot of pieces and I just really enjoy. Um, I really like when artists take that extra time to like put rocks under a character, um, or like you know whatever they're they're supposed to be kind of similar to or, or where they are uh, just because it gives off like a different vibe right like it it evokes like a feeling in you um, and this one totally speaks death to me right she's she's a um, she, it says here broken witch but I do think you know she's she's in the necromancy field right she feels dark and gloomy and, and you know the, the, the plank that she has has a really good silhouette the draftsmanship in this one is very high as well but I really really like how they did the uh the lighting on the actual character to give off that like very ominous feeling right like she can walk into a room and completely change the mood right so I really like that that kind of uh, uh emotion that they put, she puts in it also she has really nice character design so if you really like her work or this person's work i don't know if they're male or female go ahead and check them out their link will be down in the description below all right so here's the last one that we're going to be doing for today now um i want to show this guy's process uh his name is this guy in H -S -H -K -S. he's a senior senior illustrator at blizzard um i know there's a running theme that i keep finding blizzard and right people so you probably already know them so they don't really need like the exposure but oftentimes you know as an artist you focus so much time on your own work that you don't actually go looking around so that's why i'm going to show them to you guys as well as you know because i found them like a while ago and i found a lot of value in their work so i want to share that value with you guys so um they start off with a fairly loose sketch here um and then it starts to get more um detail oriented and then they start doing perspective and you know line everything up um but the thing that i really like about this piece is here right with the colors so the mood in this piece is very wholesome and i really like that right like she really wants to help um and i like that you know where they are is like really important because they're like in a kitchen right so you want to give off that feel in the kitchen but in this composition how would you do that and he does it brilliantly by putting this little thing here he puts the little roll of paper towels there so you know it's the kitchen and then there's the light here and then you can see like a lamp in the background which speaks to like oh living room right so i like that also i like the lighting of this piece you can see that it's like an afternoon you know they just finished going to do whatever it is that they were doing the lights coming in through the window and they're just you know uh she's putting the bandages on them only half of her body is illuminated the other half is like in the shadowy area but they're like more blues in this area so it makes you feel like it's a more sweet wholesome moment and it's just one of those moments that these character this character sharing with only this person right so i really like the lighting in this it just it, it does so much not only in terms of um like how it's evo like what feeling it's evoking but also because of the colors that they're using in the different areas where over here it's a little bit more saturated than it is over here on this side right you see these tiles like these are more saturated over here on the bottom they're a little bit more blue they have blues these have yellow and oranges um so I think that that's really cool in the difference in, in shading areas. And you can do this on your own too. Um, like when you're having a character that's in partial light, um, you can make a color palette for what's going to be in the light and a color palette for what's in the shadows. Now, if you want to figure out how to do that, you can go ahead and use this wonderful resource called Google. Um, I know a lot of people don't use this resource. Um, I do think you can find a lot of really interesting things there, <laughs> but I'm not about to make a tutorial on how to color pick because I'm frankly not the best at it. Um, 
or you can check out Ahmed al He has a really good course that's gone out recently that you guys can full take full advantage of um, and learn all of the fundamentals of uh, being an artist and all of that jazz on his thing. So go ahead and check that out. Um, so uh, I think that's about it. Now, I really want to click on uh, this guy's profile because I don't remember all of the stuff that he has on his profile. Um, but you can see he does have a little bit of NSFW things here and there. So, you know, if you don't want to click on those, just don't click on them. I think that's perfectly fine. That's reasonable. Uh, and you see here, right? Like he's, this is a very diabolical scene. Like I can imagine like him like really thinking and like, you know, I, I, I the quote that I think about when I look at this piece is like, um, uh, what do you do? What you do when nobody is watching is what defines you as a person, right? So when nobody's watching, he's thinking away, he's creating, he's crafting, right? So he's making this like ball, he wants to escape, he wants to get out, right? You can see his whole plan here, right? He's a very thoughtful character and I like that. Um, and even when he was like leaving and stuff, he was getting ready to go with him. He tied himself to the bottom there. That's really interesting how they did it. Anywho, guys. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and smash that like button. Comment down below what, what artist did you feel hit that spot on the head with the emotion that evoked that certain feel, right? This isn't a voting contest. It's just who, who you who did you think did it the most to you, right? Um, as an artist, you try to do your best, and your main job is to make people feel things, right? When people look at your artwork, you want them to feel something. So what did you learn from this video? Um, comment down below, um, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell icon so you get notified when the new videos are going up. Alright guys, don't forget, stay mystical.